Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you an inverted pendulum. Now this is a pendulum in which it doesn't want to swing down and rock back and forth, but it wants to swing up and rock back and forth. How is this possible? So the thing about a pendulum is if you try to balance it so it stays up top, it always seems to fall over and then it goes to its lowest stable equ equilibrium at the bottom here. It eventually stops. But what if we could make a pendulum that always wants to go to the top, defying gravity somehow? So why does the pendulum always fall and end up at the stable equilibrium at the bottom? Gravity is pulling on its center of mass, which is about right here. And as it pulls, it causes a pivot to occur because it's fixed right here on this bolt. And so as it falls, it causes it to curve in towards the center. And then it gains speed kinetic energy and it overshoots and it picks up some over here. If there were no friction, it would continually go forever back and forth like this. But because there's friction, I start it and it eventually stops at the bottom. But what if as it were falling, I were to change the position of this pivot point? What if I lowered it suddenly? Well, watch what happens. So I'm going to drop it normally first. It swings back and forth. Now I'm going to drop it and pull my hand downward. So as I let my right hand go and pull my other hand downward, it causes it to flip in the other direction. So because I pulled my hand downward, it caused a torque on it that caused it to flip the other direction now. So that means if I can time everything just right, when I drop the pendulum, I pull it down, and then when it's at the top, I push it back up again, and then it still has momentum going this way, and then I pull it down again, and that gets it to go up and I just jiggle it back and forth like this. So the amplitude, frequency, and phase all work together to keep it at the vertical position at the top. I should be able to get it to a stable equilibrium point while it's at the top, not at the bottom. But the thing is, I'm not gonna be able to jiggle the pendulum with my hand. I have to jiggle it really fast around 50 hertz or more. For that, I'm gonna need a power tool. What I've done is taken a reciprocating saw and then attached to the blade my pendulum here. And I have two pendulum, this one weighs a little more, and then this one weighs a little less that I'll put on here. So that way I can just put my pendulum in here like this, and then I have a pendulum on the end of my reciprocating saw. Okay, let's turn it on and give it a try. So now the stable equilibrium point is at the top. So it's almost like we've reversed gravity here. What's cool is you don't even have to aim it down like this to get it to work. So if it's past 90 degrees in this direction, then this is going to be at stable equilibrium point. But if it's past 90 degrees in this direction, then this is going to be at stable equilibrium point. You can see in this physics simulator how changing the amplitude and frequency and length of the pendulum affect the inverse pendulum effect. And what's really neat about this is you can actually even do this with a double pendulum. If you remember my video that I did on the double pendulum, this is a really cool thing that has two pivot points, so it's a pendulum with a pendulum on it. And you can get some really neat chaotic motion from it. But just the same as the single pendulum, if you move the double pendulum back and forth, then you can get it to be an in inverse double pendulum as well. Okay. 
And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't gone there yet. You can see some of the Action Lab experiment boxes or the Action Lab experiment book. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.